Hi the community, I'm back to do a recent Vinyl Finds video and as I said in my previous video I'm going to focus mainly on psych and prog records this time. Uh, there will be no samples or anything like that. If you're interested, please check them out. I think everything's on YouTube. Uh, and if there's something in Swedish that you don't understand and you need me to, to repeat or something like that, just let me know. Uh, so let's just jump right into it. Um, I'm here in my uh, Sunday outfit, I guess. Um, so first of all, I, I, I bought this. This is Opet's latest uh, release uh, and they released it in two versions. One sung in Swedish and one sung in English and I actually bought the Swedish version of it. I've listened to both of them online and I think that the English version is the better one, but uh, the Swedish one is more interesting in my opinion, so I actually uh, I bought that one. And the music is good, uh, they are on the same path, maybe a little bit more heavier, uh, still uh, evolving it feels like anyway, so uh, I'm a huge Opeth fan, so obviously I'm, I'm a fan of this record. Um, so, so yeah, I don't think there's anything more to say. I don't know if I'll get the English version. The Swe Swedish one feels like it's it's uh, this. I mean, a, a huge difference in the singing, but but then again, is it worth like 30, 40 bucks to to or euro to to buy another one? I don't I don't know. I don't think so. So uh, we'll see. I guess. There's a Swedish prog band called Life that released one record in 1970 or 71. Uh, they also did one version in Swedish and one in English. And the Swedish version is really rare, but the English version is even rarer. And I actually have one of those copies. I've shown them before. It's my most valuable record. Uh, so I don't know if Mick Okefeld did something with, you know, that, the thought of, of uh, doing a, a Life thing. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but being Mick Okefeld and uh, knowing that he's a, a huge Swedish prog fan, uh, it wouldn't, uh, uh, I mean, it wouldn't be so unlikely. Moving on, Swedish music. <coughs> this is a Swedish psych and folk record, uh, but more a psych singer songwriter maybe record uh, called Akogura, uh, Apple Trip, so Apple Trip. Uh, yeah, this is a, a quirky little record that you can find pretty cheap. Um, but I think they sing in Swedish, so I think this is mainly for the Swedish, my Swedish uh, subscribers. Uh, on G Produktion. Uh, if you find this for a good price, I urge you to check it out. I think you can sell it and get your money back uh, if you don't buy it for too much, obviously. Um, but I mean, 20 euro under that I think it's worth uh, there's one song called när uh, vår sol säger sakta sänker and I don't think that that's on, on YouTube but that's a masterpiece of a ballad or psychedelic folk ballad I don't know if it's out there check it out if it is but yeah a Swedish sing songwriter kind of folk record and another folk record uh, is this one Per Paulson Through Hop Op Cafe uh, Faith, Hope and Coffee? Um, there's the label there, I think it's a privately pressed release. I've only listened to this once, so I shouldn't judge it right away, but, but I have to, maybe I have to, to, uh, to listen to it a couple of times more. Um, but I have to say, I'm not super convinced. Uh, I bought this for five euro. You can find it around that uh, type of money, but but uh, yeah, I, I can't recommend it really. So, but some, something I can recommend is this, and I'm going to slaughter the the name now. Futuringay, Futuringay, Futuringay. Uh, this is a classic folk record f from uh, England with a young Sandy Denny, uh, who were in uh, Fairport Convention. I think she joined Fairport Convention back in 1968-69, something like that, and this is reported in 1970, so I think that Leech and Leaf, I think that's the name of it, was recorded first, and then this, and then another Fairport record, 
and maybe a solo record in between that. I don't know. Um, it's almost a masterpiece. It's a fantastic record um, if you're into English folk. Uh, I think that the entire uh, cast of Fairport Convention plays on this in one time or another. Maybe not together at some point, but Richard Thompson is playing guitar on, on uh, some tracks. Really, really good. This is a... Uh, I'm not showing you the label. It's an 84 repress of this. Uh, so it was released on that sort of pink island uh, with the huge uh, eye. Uh, on it so I've been looking for that for forever and I saw this for next to nothing so I just grabbed it right away uh, listening copy till I find that an original first press <clears throat> okay so this is definitely not a first press I wish I, it was but it isn't and it's actually a pretty lousy press but what are you going to do when you need the music in your collection? This is Randy Holden's Population 2. Um, and I think that uh, if I don't mix him up with another dude, uh, Randy Holden played with uh, Blue Cheer at one point, but get, got sacked from that or something like that. Um, uh, my, my man, uh, Noble Records, has a podcast. Uh, Every one of you know this. And he did uh, an entire podcast episode about Randy Holden and an interview with him. So check that out. Um, psychedelic, fussy guitar, heavy as shit. But this is on Klimt Records, mid-2000. And it's an unofficial release. And Randy Holdem, it seems to be Randy Holdem at least, uh, has written uh, a comment on all pressings on Discogs that isn't uh, legitimate pressings. Uh, and urging everyone to not buy them. And this is unfortunately uh, one of those copies. So um, if you want to give Randy m some money, you don't buy this. But then again, if you buy a, an, a used record, uh, an original press, I don't. I guess that Randy doesn't get any money uh, anyway. So buy a CD. I don't know. <clears throat> buy a classic. And talking about classic Swedish records, this is Arbeto Fritid, self-titled, uh, but their fifth re fifth release. Back in 1973, I think, or four. Uh, this is a Swedish folk song record. Uh, a lot of jazz, a lot of um, a little bit of psych and prog, and uh, and a lot of folk. So if you are a fan of Kebne Kaiser, this is a little bit more jazzy, but definitely in the same vein. So if you're a fan of Kevin Kaiser, you should check this out, Arbet of Fritid. And I think that this is one of the better ones. I haven't heard all their records, but I think this is one of the better ones that they released. Uh, I'm super happy to, to have this and add it to my collection, Swedish Pro collection. Um, I've been looking for it for a while. <clears throat> it's not super rare, but it's, it's pretty expensive when you find it. And this I've also been after for, for a while because I knew that I, can find, I could find it for a great price. Because you see them uh, from time to time for great prices. And then again, sometimes it just skyrocketed in price. So beware of this. If you see it, grab it. Uh, but the, the original press of this is really expensive. It's Icarus uh, with the Marvel Sounds of Icarus. I think the title is on the original press. It came out in 1971, maybe, 72. And 1972, they did a Swedish press. This is the Swedish press of a very quirky, psychedelic, weird record about all the superheroes of Marvel Comics back in 1972. So you have uh, titles like Thor, Black Panther, The Man Without Fear, uh, Captain America, Hulk, Fantastic Four, Spider-Man, and Conan the Barbarian. And it's also pretty weird that the A side is Thor, Black Panther, and so on, and then the the, the B side is Prologue, and then Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, and Hulk. And on the original release, it starts with Spider-Man, Fantastic uh, Four, and Hulk, so they mixed up the, the different sides. I started playing the, the Thor uh, side, uh, so that was kind of cool, but I'm a huge Marvel fan, and film fan, superhero fan, and comic fan. And I love records, so this is just a perfect record, really. Um, so released in Sweden on Oleans, which is a huge, um, um, not supermarket, but warehouse. You know where you can buy 
food and like a Walmart in Sweden. So here it is, Olens. Very, but it's, it's an awesome record. You can find this in, uh, for 10 euro. Okay, 10 euro. And you can, uh, or, or you have to pay like 50, 60 euro for it. It's a very, very weird record and uh, lives its own life. And I paid like 20, 20 uh, euro for it. Really good. And it's fantastic. I mean, the, the, they sing about the superheroes and what they do and they are heroes and stuff like that. And it's so weird. The, 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 it's so strange, the, the lyrics. Uh, almost like reading through a comic. But the music is fantastic. It's very, very, it's funky and psychedelic and proggy and space rocky. And there's a ballad thrown in there. So, uh, and I looked at the, I tried to look up the, the guys who, who did the recording. And I don't think anyone except for maybe the bass player or the drummer or something like that did anything after this project. So it's just, it's just one, one project and then everyone's gone. Uh, okay, so. Um, the next one I found this for next to nothing. It's in pretty bad shape, but it's it was a steal of a of a price. I couldn't resist it. This is uh, East of Eden with Snafu from 1970. So one year after their debut, Mass uh, Projector, Masseno, Masonat Projector, something like that. I can never remember what title of their debut album is. And this is a fantastic record, but the, in my opinion at least, the, the debut record is, is better. Uh, that's a better record. But this is, is good too. And, and getting a little bit pricey, so, so uh, getting it for, I think I paid like 12 euro, maybe, for it. Uh, clean it up, it sounds great, so, so uh, nothing to complain about there. I'm gonna finish it off with that one. This is the one that I was most happy about when I was in Stockholm, uh, this thing. Because this was one of the records that I had on my like my huge want list. Like a, a record I really, really wanted to, to find when I was there. And I know that I could find it. There were a, a store that had it. I knew that they, they had it. And, and um, uh, so I went over there and asked what the price was. But they said they uh, already uh, sold it. No, no, they had it. No, no, that, that was the, the, the third part. This is the first record. They had that, uh, but the price was a little bit too high, so I, I didn't know what to do, so I didn't buy it. And later that day in Stockholm, uh, I went to another store, and they had it, uh, and it was marked like a VG quality, and cost, I think I paid like 10 bucks, or 10 euro for it. Um, and I listened to it, and it sounded a little bit crackly, but it was kind of dirty, so I thought like maybe I'll take a chance and I clean it, and I did, and it sounds really good. Not a mint record, but it sounds really good. And it's the West Coast Pop Art Experiment Band Part One. So the first one from 1967, uh, the first uh, German press on three color reprise label from 1967. And you all know this if you're a, a psych fan, it's a fantastic psych record. And the, the three, the first three records by them is, is great. And now I have this German press and I have the first German press of the second one. And I'm still looking for the third one. The fourth one, uh, Who's Your Daddy or whatever it's called, I'm not looking for. I've listened to it, it sounds like crap. So, but I, I, uh, I'm, I'm still looking for the, the, the third record. If you have a spare, uh, let me know. Okay, so last one, and this is the most uh, uh, tricky one to show. <laughs> uh, because this is uh, Ramaces with Space Hymns uh, on Vertigo 1971. And this is the spaceship version of it, so not the swirl, uh, unfortunately. I got this and the Marvel record uh, as a deal by a collecting sort of friend now nowadays uh, I bought so much from him and we are in, in contact all the time so, so uh, uh, yeah but I got it for a great price so I uh, couldn't resist really uh, this is the six fold version I think it's called six fold 
this it's an awesome awesome uh, cover Put that there and the inside of the fucker is this so it's very tender and and uh, seems like it's going to crack any second <laughs> uh, so uh I hope I don't need to, to uh, look at it too often. But yeah, this is 10cc, if you know the band 10cc. This is 10cc, the entire band, uh, before they became 10cc. And they actually was called something else before this. I can't remember. So I think they started as a beat, 60s beat group. And then they they uh, signed to, to Vertigo and tried the whole space rock kind of thing. It's... it's, it's there's a bunch of Mid uh, Middle Eastern references, or uh, not references, but influences on this. You can really hear that. But then again, they're, they uh, try their own sort of uh, Beatlesque pop thing on it. Maybe a uh, nod to what became later on with 10cc. Uh, it's a very solid uh, Vertigo release. And as one of my followers on Instagram wrote, it's one of the, the best Vertigo uh, releases ever. Um, yeah, and I sort of agree. I think there's a bunch of better records on Vertigo than, than this. Uh, but maybe on top 25 in my book. Uh, so definitely good. Check it out if you haven't heard it. And that's it. Um, some records for you. Hope you dig it. If you... Want to ask me something? Just write a comment down below. I'll try to answer it. And I'll talk to you soon. I have some jazz that I'm listening to right now, and hopefully, I can make a jazz update pretty soon. But maybe it'll take a month before I do it. I'm out running all the time now, so I don't listen to some that much uh, records anymore. Um, yeah, some records, but um, I mean, if you have two hobbies, I guess that it's hard to, you know, okay.